What do you say we get right into a dealership lifestyle video? It is Friday morning. It's around 8 o'clock. I got here about 7.45. Uh, yesterday, I had some nice ladies come down to look at a Traverse. Uh, they kind of settled on this one. So we're going to see if we can put this deal together early in the morning. They are competing, or I am competing, I should say, against Ford, which is right up the street. They're looking at the Ford Explorer. Very good vehicle. You know, it, there's pros and cons to both, and that's kind of what they've been discussing. But what I will say is they feel the Traverse is a little bigger. And that's really one of the main selling points of the Traverse is that it is a little bit longer than the majority of the vehicles out there. So when you look at the new Telluride, the Atlas, the, uh, the Highlander, the Pilot, uh, the Explorer, this has a lot of room in the third row and a lot of room behind the third row. And that's really one of the main selling points of it. So we're going to see if we can wrap this up today, hopefully right now in the morning. I'm going to give them a call around 9 or so just to check and see what their thoughts are. Uh, they are buying a car today, so it's either going to be us or Ford. So we're going to do that and we're going to see what else happens on this cloudy Friday in New Jersey. My customer beat me to it. I just got a text from her and uh, we're gonna negotiate a little bit more and see if we can put this deal together. I think I got a deal, bro. Yeah. Alright. So my women that were here yesterday, all right? Mm -hmm. We're a little more expensive than the Ford. If we can do 415, she thinks she'll be able to 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 go with our car. This is the hard part about auto sales because we're comparing Chevy to Ford. So, you know, it's different rates, residuals, rebates. You're not necessarily going to get the same type of price point on the lease just based on the MSRP of the vehicle. And you're coming over $1,200? Yeah, we were at four twenty nine. Yeah. Make the deal. In stock, right? Yeah, we have four of them. Same exact color. Same exact vehicle, so at least we'll unload one of them. Not answering. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Ah! <laughs> the mailbox is full. Send a text. Alright, so I got a text. I'd rather not text. You'd rather not text. You'd rather get somebody on the phone because you can kind of hear their response and their emotion and what they're saying. Uh, but she called me back. Hey, how you doing? Uh, uh, it's no worries. So 415 will do it for you? Let's do it. 1200, 415, 36 months, 12,000 miles per year. <laughs> right? Uh, you know what it is? I got four of these. I got four of these in stock. The reason they're doing this is to make sure we unload one of these four that are identical. Right, correct. All right, cool. Thank you. No problem. Bye. So, we might have a deal. <laughs> she wants it. She wants it. Color? Uh, no, yeah, white. It's got to be the one in stock. No, but what's the issue? Black. She likes this car in black. She likes the Ford in white. But she understands. I, they'll, they'll, I think they're going to do it. They like it. We should have a car deal in about 5 10 minutes. Alright. All right. While we're waiting for the phone call back to see if we sell that Traverse, customers just rolled in looking at a Tahoe or a Suburban. So we're going to show them the Suburban and see what they think. That was a pretty quick visit. Those folks didn't have too much time, so they came in. To look at the size of a Suburban, they've had, uh, from what they say, they've had numerous Ford Explorers, I'm sorry, numerous Ford Expeditions, 
they need the size four children hockey bags two dogs you know that sort of stuff but they wanted to check out a suburban uh briefly so we showed them part of this business can be tough sometimes right because you always uh you know you always want to sell everyone you're in front of and it's just not the case you're not going to do it so the the way i have always felt the best way to do this business is to to basically educate your customer. You know, you overwhelm them with customer service, you educate them on all the sort of things that you want to tell them about the car or truck that most salespeople aren't going to do because they're either rushing to numbers or, or they weren't trained properly, whatever the case may be. But if you educate them, you're going to build that trust, you know, and then if they come back in a couple of days because they want to take another look or they have time to test drive, you're going to educate them more. You're going to build a little more trust. And eventually they trust you, they buy from you. They trust you enough, they become loyal. Now that's the kind of customers I have where they come in, they buy a car, three years later they buy another car, three years later they buy another car, they bring their son or daughter and they buy a car. Next thing you know, 10, 15 years goes by and you sold the family six, seven, eight cars over the over your career. So that's the way to build a business. That's the way I do it. So I look at the experience I just had with this customer as a good one. You know, even though it only lasted about 10 minutes, I got all their information. I'm going to put some stuff in the computer. I'm going to send them an email. We'll follow up with some phone calls, make sure they have all the questions answered that they wanted. And, uh, you know, that's it. Move on to the next one. But now that they left, I have to hop on the phone and call our Traverse customer to see if we can wrap that deal up. This vehicle is in demonstration mode. Connected by OnStar's high-speed 4G connection. Press the blue OnStar button to learn more. She's not answering, so we're going to send her a quick text. Here's what happened. They, they like the white. They like the black. They want a black one. Uh... All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just sending a quick text over. Uh, if they want the black, we have five different dealerships, five locations. So if they want black, we're going to get her one from one of the other locations and just keep the numbers the same. So let's hope we get this call soon. Come on, guys, call me back. I'm waiting for our customer to respond here and I keep getting completely tricked because I got a, a text message and it was my car, uh, my Volt was completely charged. Then I got another text message I looked at was actually an email. Then I got a phone call and it was my sister and now I got two text messages so we're going to see what it is. And it is my sister. Okay. I still do not have a response yet. I don't know if we're selling this Traverse but uh, I'm confident it's going to happen. Still waiting, nothing yet. Still waiting. All right, it's one o'clock, the wait might be over. I just got two text messages, didn't take a look yet. I just wanted to grab the sold sign out of this vehicle. I sold this the other day. However, the, uh, the credit had some issues. So it didn't go. That's one of those things in a car business that's just completely out of your control. Um, you know, we got an approval. It's just about $260 more than the gentleman wanted to pay. So what do we got? Text message. Uh, ah. All right. Looks like we got no go on this Traverse. So I'm guessing they're going with the Ford. Thank you so much for your time and efforts. Uh, you know, listen, this is part of the car business. Uh, no reason to get upset. All you can do is move forward. You know, what can you do, right? Thank you for the update. Uh, thanks for giving me a shot. I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity and maybe we can do business in the future. That's all you can do. We'll drop a little happy face emoji in there. You know, what I've noticed sometimes is uh, customers uh, genuinely take a liking to you sometimes. And they do feel bad if they don't buy the car from you. You know, that's just the name of the business. You shouldn't feel bad. You know, you got to buy what's best for you and your family and your budget and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, no hard feelings on my end. 
I wish I got the deal. I didn't this time, maybe in the future because of the way we treated uh, or I treated them here. Now, I'll maybe get their business in the future. That's all you can hope. Uh, that's uh, that's sort of the uh, the long game scenario of how you should play your, uh, your career as an automotive salesperson. Uh, but for now, we have to get back up front because now <laughs> we need another customer.